Family Theater presents Charles Coburn and Gigi Perot. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Gigi Perot in A Pardon for Tippy. To introduce the drama, your host, Charles Coburn. Thank you, Tony Ferrano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theatre urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. Tonight, Family Theatre takes great pleasure in presenting A Pardon for Tippy, starring Geeky Perot, as meaning. Tippy, what are you doing? Don't pull that rug. Tippy! Need a stopper. That's a new throw rug. Tippy, stop it! I'm ashamed of you. You bad dog. Oh, Mommy, you hurt her feelings. Her feelings? Look at that rug. No. Now, don't cry. I love you, Tippy. Yes, I love you. Look, Mother, hasn't Tippy got the softest brown eyes? That's how she talks to me. Tippy talks to me with her eyes. And I'm going to speak to you with the palm of my hand. Evan, don't shout at your sister like that. Did you use my soap on that dog again? You mean that sweet-smelling soap? Yes, that sweet-smelling soap. I washed Tippy with it, and I used it all up. What? Nina, you didn't on that dog. There wasn't much left anyway. Nina, the next time you wash that mangy poodle of she yours, I'm... mangy. Well, look, she's sensitive. Of course she is. You'd better stop talking that way about her. <laughs> Tippy, quiet, quiet. <laughs> and we'd better not insult her anymore. Okay, I, I'm sorry. Forget it. I'm not going to stand for it, and you'd better take back everything you said. All right, I, I take it back. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mommy, Mommy! Oh, Nina, what's the matter? What happened? Something terrible. Oh, now calm down, dear. It's Alice. Your friend Alice? What, what, what's happened? They took her dog away. Nina. The idea of frightening me like that. They took her dog away. The dog catchers got him. All right, I'm very sorry to hear it. Now, let's forget all about it, Nina. Wash up and have your lunch. I don't care about lunch. Where's Tippy? Oh, probably wandering around someplace where she shouldn't be, I suppose. I've got to find her. You sit right down and have your lunch. I don't feel like eating. Go wash your hands. Mommy, please let me find Tippy first. You don't have time, Nina. But I can't eat till I find her. You certainly can. <laughs> Mom, please let me find her. Maybe the dog catcher's got her, too. I've got to find her. Oh, Nina, please don't cry, dear. I'm sure nothing's happened to her. I can't help it. I worry about her, Mommy. I've got to find Tippy. Oh, Tippy, you're all right. My beautiful little Tippy. How are you, Mom? Uh, Tippy, come back here. Evan, stop her. What for? Hey, look at her go. I don't want the dog catcher to get her. Tippy, come back. Tippy. Oh, you'll never get her now, Mom. Oh, that dog. Evan, you go get her. What for? She'll be back. What are you worried about her for all of a sudden, Mom? Well, I promised Nina I wouldn't let her out by herself. Well, why not? Well, Nina's afraid the dog catchers might get her. Uh, not in this town. Even the dog catchers aren't reliable. Now, Evan, don't start up with your politics. The Better Government Association is not political. It is for better government. Anything wrong with that, Mom? No, nothing. We could use a little better government in this house. Nina and Tippy are getting out of hand. They're just one big worry. Say, you're not getting fond of that dog, too, are you? Oh, I, I wouldn't want anything to happen to her. Did you look all over the 
the neighborhood, dear? Everywhere. Don't worry. She'll come home. She always does. No, she won't. Why, Nina? I think the... The dog catcher's got her. What are we going to do, Mommy? What are we going to do? Now, sis, don't cry. You'll get another dog. I don't want another dog. Well, crying won't help, Nina. You go to bed now. Get a good night's rest. You'll feel better in the morning. But I can't sleep. Not without Tippy. Go to bed, dear. You'll fall asleep. All right. But let me sleep on the day bed, Mommy. Then I can hear Tippy if she comes back. No, you can't sleep on the day bed. The street noises will keep you awake. I don't care. All right, Nina, you can sleep in the living room, but you, you mustn't feel too bad, dear, if Tippy doesn't come back. Do you think maybe somebody stole her? Who would want that mutt? Evan? She's not a mutt. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Say, Nina, you want to go to the show? It might help you forget about your dog. I don't want to forget her. I'll stay home and wait for Tippy. How about you, Mom? No, I'll, I'll wait for Tippy, too. Dear God, don't let anything happen to Tippy. Please take care of her. She's such a poor little dog. Please watch over her. Evan, is that you, Evan? Nina, are you still up? It's almost midnight. Tippy hasn't come home yet. Now, don't worry, sis. Evan, I think the dog catcher's got Tippy. Yeah, yeah, I guess they have. But she might be lost. Maybe somebody stole her or maybe... I don't think so. Will they feed her and take care of her? Oh, of course they will. But I want her back, Evan. I, I suppose it'll cost money to get her out. Yes, it will, and, and we can't afford it, Nina. But it wouldn't cost much. Whatever it is, it's too much. I'm, I'm sorry, sis. How much could it be? I don't know, but it's no use, Nina. Evan, would you call up the dog pound? At this hour? I'll call in the morning. No, I'll call myself. Will you please find the number for me? Well, all right. If you promise to go to sleep. I promise. Please, Evan. All right. Here's the phone book. Let's see now. City dog pound. Maybe I could earn the money. Do you think it's a lot of money? Do you think it's more than a dollar? Hey, hey, here it is. Dog pound union 2141. I'll write it down. Union 2141. Union 2141. I'll write it down. You don't have to memorize it. I just want to be sure, just in case I lose the number. Now, don't worry, sis. Remember, dogs aren't the most important things in the world. I know, but I miss her so much. <sighs> Good night, sis. Good Sleep night, Evan. Union 2141. Union 2141. Union 2141. <laughs> This morning, it'll cost seven dollars to get Tippy out. Oh, that's too much. Four dollars for a license and three dollars for a release, I suppose. That's too much money. Of course, but she just won't listen to reason. That child has been miserable all day. Where's she now, Mom? It's almost dinner time. Out trying to get the seven dollars. But how? I don't know. She didn't say. Poor little thing. She hasn't eaten a bite since yesterday. I never realized how much that dog meant to her. Oh, she'll get over it. I was thinking maybe if I brought her another puppy, she'd forget about Tippy. Maybe. It's worth trying. Anything to make her forget that dog. Oh, uh, Nina, is that you? Yes, Mom. I'm sorry I'm late for dinner. I'm not hungry anyway. What were you doing with your new roller skates? Were you skating? No. I thought maybe I could sell them. For seven dollars? No, as much as I could get. That was Mom's Christmas present, sis. I thought she wanted skates more than anything else in the world. Not more than Tippy. Nina, I wouldn't let you sell your skates. Why, I got them for you especially. I'm sorry, Mom. I love your skates. But if I don't save Tippy right away, they'll... Why, she'll die. Tippy will die. I can't let Tippy die. I can't let her oh, die. come here, Nina. Now, don't cry, dear. I'm sorry, Mommy. I know, dear. But crying won't help. Isn't there anything we can do? Anything? You mean anything that won't cost $7? Can't you think of something, Evan? Well, now, well, let's see. I, you could write a letter to the governor. Evan, don't. 
Please don't tease her. Say, I'll bet the mayor could save Tippy. I bet the mayor could could grant a pardon for Tippy. What's a pardon? Well, the mayor just calls up the city dog pound and he says, Hold everything. Tippy must not die. Set her free. This is the mayor speaking. And that's all there is to it. Can the mayor really do that? Now, Evan, you know that isn't so. Well, maybe not. I doubt if the mayor could do anything without asking Carberry first. Who's Carberry? The man who runs the mayor. I could call up the mayor and ask him. Yeah, you could, if he'd bother to listen to you. I don't care. I'll call him. Tell you what, I'll get his office for you. Now, uh, what was it I was supposed to do, Carberry? It's about this incinerator deal. We don't want it built in the Southwest District. Get it out of there. Uh, but, uh... Most of the councilmen are in favor of the Southwest. I know, I know, but all we need are just a couple of votes to swing it our way. Get Harrison and Blake up here and talk to them. Tell them how to vote. It's up to you. Well, frankly, Carberry, I I think the Southwest District is the cheapest and the best... Now, look, just do as I say, don't I? No need to get excited, Carberry. After all, as mayor of this town, I do have an opinion on these matters. Your opinion isn't important. There are several other people whose opinions are important, and they want it out of their district. Do you follow me? But as mayor, I certainly Look, should... Look, I ha- made you mayor, and I'll keep you here, but you got to do what you're told. <sighs> Excuse me. Hello? There's a little girl on the phone, sir. She insists on speaking to you. A little girl? Well, what does she want? Well, she won't say. She has to speak to you. It's very important, she says. Uh, who is it? It's a little girl. She wants to speak to the mayor. <laughs> ah, hang up. Now, about this incinerator... Well, she says it's very important. Look, this incinerator deal is more important. Now, hang up. Hello? Yes, sir. Tell her I'm sorry. I'm busy. Yes, sir. Wasting your time on kids. It's crazy. Children are important, too. I'm sure her problem was... Yeah, forget it, forget it. Look, uh, when will you see Harrison and Blake? I'll take care of it. Today. Today. So he hung up on you. I thought he would. Don't worry, we'll get him next election. But what about Tippy? I've got to tell him about Tippy. Forget it, Nina. I won't forget it. I'm going to see the mayor. All right now, Nina. Put your skates away. Evan, are you sure the mayor can really pardon Tippy? Sure. Now all you have to do is talk to him. For the last time, Nina, put your skates away and wash your hands. I know where the city hall is. It's downtown. Oh, Evan was only joking. But the mayor could pardon Tippy. You said so yourself. I know, but why, Nina? You're not serious. I'm going to see the mayor tomorrow. At a girl. Evan, don't encourage her. It's ridiculous. It's not ridiculous. It's a matter of life and death. That's right, Mom. Tippy's life is at stake. I'm not going to let Nina make a fool of herself. I'm not going to make a fool of myself. I'm going to see the mayor. I'll walk right in and talk to him. Say, I'll bet you could do it, too. Let her go, Mom. Evan, are you out of your mind? I'm serious, Mom. But the mayor of a big city, he's a busy man. Why, he'll... Let me try, Mom. you let her go, Mom? Of course she'll have to get past that click that controls the mayor. Oh, don't be so cynical. It's a known fact, Mom. I I bet they even tell him when to go out for lunch. Oh, let her go anyway. I like her spunk. Will you let her go? Well, all right. But no more talk about Tippy afterwards. I promise. Do you know how to get there? You take the number two bus right to the city hall. Number two bus. And don't make friends with strangers. And don't talk to anybody but the mayor. I won't. And don't ride with strangers either. Oh, well, absolutely not. I promise. And come right back home. Don't go any place with anybody. I won't, Mom. I'll give you bus fare. Remember now, come straight home. I will. I'll come straight home after I see the mayor. Yes, after you see the mayor. <laughs> Main Street, City Hall. Do I get off here for City Hall? That's right, young lady. There it is. Thank you. Who do you think you're going to see at City Hall? The mayor? Yes. (laughs) Main floor, watch your step. Oh, hello there. You going up with me? Yes. What floor is the mayor on? The who? The, The mayor. Yeah, that's what I thought you said. Uh, fourth floor. Thank you. Okay. Go on up. Go on up. Fourth 
floor. Yeah, here we are, little girl. Uh, good luck. This must be the mayor's office. No, no, the mayor can't see you today. I'll put you down for tomorrow. I know, I know, I'm sorry. Yes, I'll put you first thing in the morning. Yes. Goodbye. Well, hello. Are you lost? No. Well, this is the mayor's office. I want to see the mayor, please. Oh, you go down the hall and I... What did you say? I want to see the mayor. Well, uh, what do you want to see him about? About something very important. Oh. Well, see that lady over there by that desk? You talk to her. Thank you. Excuse me. Oh, hello. Can I help you? Yes, please. I want to talk to the mayor. Oh, you do? Well, the mayor is very busy. But it's very important. Well, what's it about? It's about something very important. I can't tell you. I have to talk to the mayor. Is it really very important? It's a matter of life and death. Well, that certainly sounds important. Just a minute. Herb? Oh, Herb? Uh, yes, Sue? Come here a minute, will you? Yeah, sure. Well, what's the matter? She came to see the mayor. Oh, yeah, I know. Tell him, honey. I want to see the mayor. It's very important. It's a matter of life and death. Life and death? Yes. I came on the bus. My brother gave me the car fare. I came to talk to the mayor. It's very important. What do you think, Herb? Why, what do you mean? I can't oh, take... Oh, gee, it'd be a shame to disappoint the child. Yeah, sure, I know, but he's in conference right now. I don't dare interrupt him. Now, let me get this straight. Do you intend to ask for this tax now? That's right, Carberry. You can't do it, Mayor. That's no way to get re-elected. You can't raise taxes now. It would be political suicide. I promised those road improvements to the people. I was elected on those promises. So what? Three months from now, when the voters go to the polls, all they'll remember is the tax. I say not another cent for anything. Not until election's over. Carberry is right. Play it smart. Keep the budget down. But I don't think it's the right thing to right do. Right or wrong, politics. it's not good politics. I say... I know what you say, Carberry. Now, look. You'd better not do anything we advise you against. Not if you want to get re-elected. They'll forget it. People forget. I don't think so. And I... Feelings won't get you re-elected. Now, get wise. Play it safe. I don't know. I, I'm not so sure. Herb has some papers on this deal. I want you to see them. Uh, I'll get him to bring them in. Never mind. I don't want to see them. Well, these are important. They'll open your eyes. I just see what I want to see. Never mind the paper. Herb's at his desk. Wait, I'll get him. Uh, I'll be back in a minute. Oh, but Herb, she came here all by herself. It'll break her heart. Oh, I don't think the mayor would mind, but, you know, you know Carberry, he'd bite my head off. Oh, say, look. The mayor just walked out of his office. I think he's looking for you. Oh, uh, here I am, sir. Uh, I'll be right there. Oh, is that the mayor? Hello, remember me? I called yesterday. Oh, so you're the young lady who called me. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I called you, but you were busy. Well, come on over here, young lady. What's your name? Uh, Nina. Nina what? Nina, Nina Moore. Nina Moore. Well, that's a pretty name. Here, yeah, now, you sit down. Right here on this desk. Yeah. Now, what can I do for you? They got Tippy, my dog Tippy, and I love her very much, and she's such a little dog, she never hurt anybody, and she can't even bite, because she doesn't have any teeth, and I love her, and I miss her so much. Could I please have her back? Please, Mr. Mayor, will you pardon Tippy? Oh, no, let's not cry. Everything's going to be all right. I'm sorry. It's all right. Yeah, use mine. Uh, her, get her glass of water. Uh, yes, sir. Did you come here all by yourself? Yes, sir. My brother Evan gave me bus fare. Are you hungry? No, thank you. I just want Tippy. Oh, yes, yes, Tippy. Now, what happened to Tippy? The dog catcher's got her. Oh, I see. And uh, what do you want me to do? Could you please get a pardon for her? Get a what? A pardon. You know, you could call up the dog pound and say, I want you to let Tippy go. I want a pardoner. I can do that. Sure, it's a law. Herb. Did you know I could pardon dogs? I know, sir. Did you, Miss Simpson? No, I didn't. Mm, now you see what an important job this is. I never realized until now how important a mayor really is. Will you do it, Mr. Mayor, will you? Well, I'll try. Oh, thank you. Miss Simpson, please get me the dog pound. Oh, yes, sir. It's Union 2141. Thank you. You're welcome. So, Union you came to see the mayor. You came here all by yourself. Did you have much trouble finding me? Oh, no. Everybody knows where the mayor is. Here you are, sir. Now, in just a minute, I'll pardon your dog. <clears throat> Hello? Are you the man in charge? Yeah, I'm in charge. What do you want? <clears throat> this is the mayor calling. Uh-oh. The mayor. The mayor of the city. 
Look, mister, I'm busy right now. Call me back April 1st, will you? Hello. Hello. Well, he hung up. Didn't he believe you were the mayor? I guess not. Well, are you? Are you really the mayor? You're not making fun of me, too, are you? Are you really the mayor? <laughs> well, this is serious, all right. Uh, I'll prove it to you. Miss Simpson, get me an outside line, please. Yes, sir. Nina, pick up that phone and call the mayor. All right. Hello? I want to talk to the mayor, please. I'll answer it. Hello? Hello. Hello, Nina. This is the mayor speaking. Hello. I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. Well, there. I guess that proved it, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, now, that's better. Herb, call back the pound and explain to him, will you? Why, sure. Uh, maybe I'd better let Carberry handle it. Never mind Carberry. i better take it in my office. Uh, yes, sir. Now, Nina, how are you going to get to the dog pound to pick up Tippy? I have bus fare. I'll tell you what. You save your bus fare. I'll send for my car. I'll take you there myself. How would you like that? Riding in the mayor's car. Thank you very much, but I can't ride with anyone. Well, why not? I promised my mother I wouldn't ride with strangers. Oh, but we're friends, aren't we, Nina? Yes, but... but I promised. No, I think I'd better take the bus. <laughs> all right, then. Call your mother and ask her if it's all right for you to ride with the mayor. Well, all right. I'll ask her. Everything is all set at the dog pound. Good. I've got the man on the phone. He wants Nina to tell him the dog's name. Oh, uh, Miss Simpson, uh, get him on this line, please. Oh, surely. Hello? Yes, here she is. Uh, now, go ahead, Nina. The man at the dog pound wants to know the name of your dog. Go on, tell him. Hello? My dog's name is Tippy. <coughs> Tippy, Tippy, is that you? Are you all right, Tippy? Oh, Tippy, it's Tippy, Mr. Mayor. Oh. It's Nina, Tippy, it's Nina. I'm going to take you home, Tippy, home. <coughs> Oh, yes, sir. I knew you'd save Tippy. I just knew you would. Oh, you did? How did you know? Because it wasn't right to take Tippy away from me. And you're a big, important man. You would know it was wrong, and you wouldn't let it happen. I see. I would know it was wrong, and I wouldn't let it happen. Right or wrong, it's not good politics. And I know you could do anything you want to do. You'd better not do anything we advise you against if you want to get re-elected. And thank you again for the pardon for Tippy. I'll never forget you for saving my dog. Never. They'll forget it. People forget. Thank you, Nina. You've done something for me, too. Something very important. Oh, look, we're home now. Will Mommy and Evan be surprised to see you? Oh, I'm sorry, Nina. I, uh, I have to get back to the city hall and do some house cleaning. And there's some people waiting for me, too. What people? The people of this city. The people who elected me mayor. I have a job to do for them, too. All right, Mr. Mayor. Goodbye, Nina. Goodbye, and thank you, Mr. Mayor. Goodbye. Thank you, Nina. This is Charles Coburn again. You know, I have a friend who's quite a fisherman and hunter. A person the newspapers would call a sportsman, I guess. The other day I said to him, Bill, what are your thoughts on prayer? You remind me sometimes of an uneasy cat, up and stirring at all hours, prowling into nature's secrets. What's it all about? Listen, he said to me. For all you may think, I'm not one of those parrot brains who says you don't have to go to church because you find God best in nature. I love nature, but I don't worship it. For all nature worships someone else, God. To me, being in a cathedral now with the organ playing, well, that's beautiful too. But the whole world's a cathedral. And I like to think that in nature's cathedral, there's only one voice. Because nature's God is one God. This one voice now, of course, there are different variations of it, somewhat like a church organist playing variations on the same theme. 
but in nature there are almost infinite variations. Well, nature is an organist too, with winds and pipes and manuals and, yes, a musical notation written across the wide horizons in clouds and skies and tall pine trees and mountain peaks and such. It's all one voice, all brought forth by the same organist. Man has a voice too, and it's better than any of them. But of all God's creatures, he alone sometimes doesn't lift it up, doesn't loan it back to the God who gave it to him. And a man who doesn't use his voice to pray, well, he's like a cracked fiddle, no better than a piece of firewood. So when you count me in, the whole of God's world reminds me why I should pray. And I do. I used to think that this friend of mine wasted a lot of time with his hunting and fishing and tramping. But I've changed my mind. He's learned some things that I've never read in books or heard in sermons. Keep these seven words ringing in your thoughtful ears. The family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you Gigi Perot in A Pardon for Tippy. Charles Coburn was your host. Others in the cast were Bill Johnstone, Wally Mayer, Sarah Selby, Tommy Cook, Martha Shaw, Howard Culver, John Larch, Earl Keane, and Ray Hyde. The script was written by Saul Seidman with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman and was directed for Family Theater by Joseph F. Mansfield. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this type of program, by the Mutual Network, which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who have so unselfishly given of their time and talent to appear on our Family Theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lafrano expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to join us next week at the same time when Family Theater will present Miss Ethel Barrymore narrating the inspiring story of the passion and death of Christ. Your host will be Lionel Barrymore. Join us, won't you? Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network, the Mutual Broadcasting System.